In this video, we're going to be looking at two more applications of um, parametric equations and calculus. Specifically, we're going to be looking at computing area and computing surface area using parametric equations. So let's look at this definition first. So suppose we have a function y equals f of x that's non-negative and continuous on the interval alpha to beta. So this is using um, x bounds here of alpha to beta, um, which implies that the area bounded by the graph of h and the x-axis would be equal to just our integral of h of x dx or the integral of y dx. So this is what we're what we're used to, find the area under the curve. You know, usually we had some function f, we do the integral of f dx. Here I've got a function h. So the integral of h with my x bounds dx. So now if I think about um, having that same curve represented by some parametric equations, so if that graph y equals h of x is traced out exactly once by the parametric equations here of x equals f of t and y equals g of t for t between a and b, then it follows, if we do some substitution, that we're going to get the following. So let's look at this. So I have an integral from alpha to beta of h of x dx. That's just the regular sort of um, integral that you would have learned in, in Calc 1 for the area under the curve h. Now let's just call h y here. And then let's think of the fact that y is equal to g of t. So we're doing a substitution here. y is equal to g of t. And then dx here. Well, if x was equal to f of t, then dx is equal to f prime of t dt. So that's exactly what we're getting there. So we have um, our dx piece is this f prime of t dt. Okay, and now I have bounds from a to b where um, my function f at a is equal to alpha, so x being alpha here y being beta um, is corresponding to t values of a and b. Okay, So this is looking at, um, okay, it, we could go from b to a potentially if um, the point uh, x equals alpha corresponded to the t value of b and the, and the point um, x equals beta corresponded to the t value um, a. So you'll have one of these kinds of formulations for the area in terms of parametric equations. So it's just a little bit of variable substitution based on the, the normal integral setup that, that you're familiar with. So let's see how we can use that in this example. So here I want to use parametric equations of an ellipse centered at the origin. So those parametric equations are x equals a cosine theta and y equals b sine theta, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. We're trying to find the area enclosed by that ellipse. So let's get a graph first to help us visualize what's going on. So this is an ellipse, so that's like an oval here, centered at the origin, um, where it has this x equals a cosine theta. That's my, uh, my horizontal distance from the origin is a. When I have this y equals b sine theta, my vertical distance from the origin is b. So my ellipse is going to look something like, like this here. Okay. I'm interested in finding the area inside of that whole thing, but notice that we're going to be able to make use of some symmetry here, and we always like to make use of symmetry when we can. Um, it's going to be easier for me to find the area of just the part of the ellipse that's in the first quadrant, because that's where I have um, all my, my graph being, being positive. I can think about the area between this curve and the x-axis and then multiply that times 4. So I can say that my area here um, is equal to 4 times an integral from 0 to a of y dx. So sort of think about setting this up in terms of um, our regular sort of area of some function in terms of x. Um, now think about doing the conversion here. So this is going to be equal to 4 times an integral. I'm going to have to think about um, what my theta bounds are going to need to be. But my y is b sine theta. Okay. Now what's my dx? Well, x is equal to a cosine theta, so dx is equal to negative, oops, negative a sine theta d theta. So this is negative a sine theta d theta. Okay. Now when x is equal to, oops, wait for this to catch up here for a second. When x is equal to um, 0, I would have 0 is equal to a cosine theta, or 0 equals cosine theta. 
So that corresponds to theta equals pi over 2. So when theta is pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 would give me that x value of 0. When x is equal to a, I would have a equals a cosine theta. I'd have 1 equals cosine theta. And that's going to correspond to theta equals 0. Okay. So it looks like when x is 0, I have pi over 2. And when um, x is a here, I have theta is 0. So I've got this um, integral here from pi over 2 to 0. So let's look at um, simplifying this a little bit. So notice that I have a negative sign here, and I have my bounds going from pi over 2 to 0. If I'd like those to go from 0 to pi over 2, I can multiply my integral by a negative. So I'm going to have 4 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2. I can factor out these constants of a and b. So I have 4ab, the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And then I just have sine times sine here. So this is sine squared theta d theta. And now we're ready to go ahead and integrate that. So this is a good place for us to uh, review the techniques that we had for um, integrating different kinds of trig functions. So remember we had an identity here, the power reducing identity. Um, sine squared was equal to 1 minus cosine of 2 theta all over 2. So we're going to be able to insert that into here. So I have here 4ab, the integral from 0 to pi over 2. 1 minus cosine 2 theta, that's all over 2, so I can pull that over 2 out in front, d theta here. So this is going to be 2ab, I'm going to have theta um, minus sine of 2 theta all over 2, when we do that antiderivative, evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. So let's see, we're going to have 2ab, we plug in pi over 2, that'll be pi over 2 here, minus, I'm going to have sine of pi, which is going to be 0, then I'd have to subtract what happens when I would plug in 0, but I would also get 0 for theta here, and then sine of 0 is 0. So I just have 2ab times pi over 2. So it looks like my area is ab pi. So an area of an ellipse that's given by that set of parametric equations with x equals a cosine theta and y equals b sine theta um, will have this area of a times b times pi. Okay. So let's look at one more um, example here, now dealing with surface area. So you're going to see we're going to go through sort of the same sort of ideas, thinking about converting our um, usual surface area equation now to a surface area equation in terms of um, our parametric equations. So we let C be some parametric curve that's given by these parametric equations, x equals f of t and y equals g of t, where t is between a and b. We assume f prime and g prime are continuous, which means that our functions f and g were differentiable, so the derivative was always defined. Um, we have some other conditions here to assume we're going to have a nice just single piece of a curve um, that we're going to rotate um, about our axis. So remember that when we were doing um, our surface area, just in terms of some function y equals f of x. Um, in that case, we had some integral from something like alpha to beta for the x bounds of 2 pi. If I was going about the x-axis, I had 2 pi, then I had like y of x here, and then I had my square root of 1 plus y prime of x squared dx. Okay. Well now, Instead of having, um, now this is a y, I want to make sure that that looks like a y and not like a g. So this is my, my y here. Um, since y is equal to g of t, I'm replacing that part there with g of t. There's an additional conversion that goes on here with the, the dx and with this square root part. So this whole part here the, is coming from that arc length part. Well, that arc length part in um, the parametric form is this square root of the dx dt squared, or the f prime of t squared here, plus the g prime of t squared dt. So we're getting that, that same kind of conversion, but this is related to the surface area equation that we um, were familiar with before. Um, here we're also stating the, what the surface area formula looks like if I was doing a rotation about the y-axis. So if I'm going about the y-axis, I have 
um, my my x function in here since remember this part represents a radius if I'm going about the um, the y-axis there then I have my little radius as horizontal so it's in terms of x so I have f of t there instead of g of t but this part here the um, parametric arc length part that goes into our surface area formula is the same for both about the x-axis and about the y-axis. So let's just look at using this um, equation in one example. So here I'm interested in finding the exact area of the surface obtained by rotating the curve given by x equals cosine cubed, y equals sine cubed for theta between zero and pi over two about the x-axis. So this is an example that we had seen before, so we're gonna kind of uh, make use of some of the simplification that we'd done in the example where we found the, the arc length of that um, particular curve. So let's see what our setup looks like. So I need to do an integral from 0 to pi over 2. So remember that this graph um, looked like this. It was this asteroid, so it looked like this. Okay. We're only doing the piece in the first quadrant here. Okay, only finding the... Um, surface area when that piece is rotated um, about the x-axis. Obviously, if I have this whole curve, I wouldn't want to rotate the whole thing about the, the x-axis. I'd be, be double counting various pieces. So I'm going to have this integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 2 pi. I'm going about the x-axis, so I need my, my y here, so that's going to be sine cubed theta. And then we're going to have um, our square root of dx um, d theta squared plus dy d theta squared. So my dx d theta, again this is 3 cosine squared theta times negative sine theta. Okay, so that was um, that derivative there. Let's see, that's my dx d theta and then I'm going to have to square that plus my dy d theta which would be um, 3 sine squared theta times cosine theta, so I'd have to square that d theta. Okay, so the form that we have here actually appeared in our, our earlier problem um, when we were finding the arc length, so I'm not going to go through the um, steps to simplify that again. We saw that earlier and we were able to see that that square root by expanding this out and factoring out some um, various cosine and sines and using a trig identity there, I was able to see that that simplified to 3 cosine theta sine theta, okay, from the work in the arc length problem. So by work in earlier arc length problem. Okay, so here I have this integral from 0 to pi over 2. I have 6 pi is a constant I can pull out in front, and this is cosine theta times sine to the fourth theta d theta. Okay, so again, this gives us a chance to do a little more practice with integration techniques. Notice here I can use u is equal to sine theta, du is cosine theta d theta. So this is 6 pi, the integral of u to the fourth du. When um, theta is 0, u would be 0. When theta is pi over 2, u would be 1. So I just have this integral from 0 to 1 of u to the 4th du. So this is 6 pi times u to the 5th over 5 evaluated from 0 to 1. So I'm going to end up with 6 pi over 5 is the value of the surface area when I rotate that red portion of the curve about the x-axis.